I'm David Steigerwald. Uh, I'm a professor of history here at Ohio State University, and uh, my area is modern U.S. history. I've written pretty widely across the 20th century. Uh, my first book was on uh, Wilsonian idealism that uh, ran from World War I all the way up to the 1960s. Uh, I've written a lot on the 60s and on American consumer society, American culture, and American intellectual history. These days, I'm trying to finish a, a big book on alienation and affluence after World War II, basically the second half of the 20th century. I like engaging with students. Frankly, I think our students are, are interesting people, and um, on the whole, they're really bright, and it doesn't take that much to get them interested in the material that you're trying to impart to them. So uh, it's being around young people and feeding off them that to me is the most satisfying and gratifying thing about teaching. The history department's well-known uh, World War II study abroad program was the brainchild of Bill Childs, who is a now retired professor who was here for a good 30 years or so. And so the program came to me and I'm totally the beneficiary of a marvelous structure that Bill Childs created. Students who are accepted into the program take a series of classes, several history classes, and then a, a culture class, a European culture class, either in the German department or the French department. Uh, each of those departments has a, an appropriate class that deals with mid-century uh, Europe or France and, and Germany. And so it's inherently a, a multidisciplinary program. Uh, the history classes they take are my mid-century U.S. class, so they get a dose of the war through American eyes, as if they need that. Uh, and then the World War II class, which is an international class uh, that covers the whole breadth of just the war, focuses just on the war. So by the time they get ready to go to, uh, to Europe in May, they, they have a pretty good undergraduate basis for what they're seeing, what they're learning when they're there, they're well prepared to deal with the things that they uh, encounter in Europe. And by the way, the program is open to all majors. Uh, in fact, we're, we've always set it up with the idea of inviting in uh, non-history majors into the program. And so far, about half of the students have been non-majors. So it's worked that way. Um, but many of them are attracted by the travel. We go to London, we go to Normandy, we go to Paris, we go to Berlin. Next year, I'm pretty sure we're going to cut Paris a little bit so that we can go to Poland as well and, and go see Auschwitz uh, out of Krakow. And so it's the travel that really attracts, especially those who haven't had the chance to go abroad. The, the students who've gone on the program have uniformly lauded it, and a number of them, I have to say, have told me that it has been life-changing for them. I think the whole... <laughs> The, the whole structure of the program can have that effect on students. Even really good students find that class is challenging. And so by the time they get to Europe, and by the time they finish out with that last banquet we have in Berlin, they really feel as though they've accomplished something. They've become close friends with at least some of their fellow uh, program students. They've developed a close relationship with a couple of OSU faculty that remains. I, they continue to come see me. I insist they continue to come see me. I think I've written letters of reference for every one of them, at least one of uh, such letters. And so we don't see this as just a, uh, a class that's done, we're done. We've become a kind of a camaraderie uh, and, and, and a, a group of comrades that I think has been a really marvelous thing. We also go to the Imperial War Museum, and one of our focuses on the trip is to appreciate the different interpretation of the war in different places. And the museums really are, are interpretive marvels that express a kind of collective national memory wherever you're at, right? And so one of our tasks is to understand how the British and the French and the Germans all see the war in a different historical light, as you can easily imagine. And we make sure that students have enough time to see the sites. In fact, in each place we're at, they have a free day where they get to explore on their own. But we also finish early enough in the afternoon that they can go out and enjoy the places where they're, they're staying. We've had the great good fortune of getting to know a number of very good friends of the program who have 
traveled on other trips with us, that, and they've been able to see what the students go through. They've been very, very generous to us, and as a consequence, we've been able to build an endowment that is just for the program. And through the endowment, we've been able to at least provide some money for every student who's been accepted so far. And so we're feeling pretty good about how much help we're able to give students. And one of the great things is that if you're accepted, uh, you can apply for scholarships that are dedicated to just this program so that the students aren't competing um, college-wide over the study abroad scholarships from OIA or from the college. It's a wonderful trip all the way through, and students leave Berlin having seen a good deal of Europe, having been in some of Europe's most important cities, and uh, having learned an awful lot about World War II.